Hey folks, I'm Mike. Do you hate ads? I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence. It keeps this blog ad free. Hello folks and welcome to Inkdependence.com. Today we're taking a look at this ink. This is Tasha Die Die, which I have in a sample from Anderson Pens. Thank you much, very much, Anderson Pens, for sending this out for review. Uh, this is a very nice bright orange, as you can see here, and I have, of course been using it in this pen. This is the Sailor 1911 Standard in the uh, Royal Tangerine color, and it was really calling out for this uh, this pen, I think. Very close to uh, some colors you get in that there swatch. Uh, these inks come in small-ish bottles at 40 mils. I mean, it's still a pretty good size bottle, really. It's a lot of fills, uh, but 40 mils, and they cost about 12 bucks. You can also get these, which are three mil samples, uh, and you'll get those for a buck 75 at the old Anderson pens. So go and check it out there. Uh, I will, uh, you know, check out this review and let me know what you think because this is an ink that I'm honestly a little bit on the fence with. Um, there are a lot of orange inks coming out right now and um, dye dye is a really pretty color. However, it's got a couple of things going that make me go, mm, I don't know if I'm gonna, you know, recommend this for everybody all the time. Um, one thing is just that it's slightly, it's slightly on the dry side in my sailor here. I really haven't used it in any other pens. It seems like the one to use it in. Um, but uh, medium dry, so that's not really my jam. I love it when ink it really just goes. Um, and so this one is maybe a little bit dry for this particular pen. It doesn't perform terribly or anything like that, but it just doesn't feel awesome, you know? So um, so there's that. And the other thing is that uh, I get a little bit of bleed on the 20 pound crappy copy paper that I use from Staples. This is like 30% recycled. It's, uh, you know, what you find in offices, what they order probably without thinking too much about it. Um, so a little bit of bleed there. Not terrible, not egregious, but you definitely get some. We'll show that to you here in just a little bit. Um, the real thing for me that puts me off this ink a little bit is uh, what it does on the nib. So what it looks like on the nib right now. And that's after I've been, you know, messing with it a little bit. But you can see how it's got like a little bit of a, a, little bit of a crust on there. You can also see some of that on the back. Uh, this is, as far as I know, not harmful. This is just a thing that happens sometimes with inks that contain a lot of yellow pigment, it seems. I've had greens do this, I've had oranges, I've had some reds, uh, but it's always things that are in that uh, that yellow color space or that have that yellow component that tend to turn into a funk. Um, this one, I've actually, I cleaned it off pretty recently. I actually had to take the whole nib out and uh, sonicate it and that sort of thing because it gets just like crusted over. When this ink evaporates, as you can see there right around the breathing hole, uh, I primed this a little bit before I wrote the review, and as it dried, you can see it formed like a bit of a crust there. Um, I just call this the nib crud. It's not, uh, like I said, it's not dangerous. It washes off with water. It's just the, the pigments or whatever in the ink tend to like build up. Like when you do that science experiment when you're a kid in, uh, in school and you put the, the string or whatever in the salt water and it makes the salt crystals, it's kind of like that. It's just a product of evaporation, but some inks do it way worse than others, and dye dye might be the, the biggest offender. Uh, I saw Janine Scribbles had some of that on her Instagram not too long ago. Uh, and here I'll actually insert a picture that I took a while ago of this one nice and crusted up. All right. So not really a not really a deal breaker or anything. Like it's a thing I can put up with, but uh, while I like the color of this ink, there's a lot of oranges coming out right now. It's a hot time for oranges. And uh, so this one, like, just, it's not doing it for me exactly. Uh, all right, so let's take a look at the, let's do a little water test right quick, and then we'll take a look at it on a couple of other papers. And uh, that'll be it. We're just doing a quick review today. All right, so here we go. Let's get this little cat hair off of the tip there. And there we go. There. I'm not really expecting it to be, uh, to be waterproof or anything like that, but, you know, one never knows. We'll give it a shot. Uh, it's not looking good, however. Look at that. Uh, like right now, it looks like there's not going to be anything left. <laughs> Give it a little bit of a shake. <laughs> All right. Also, this is not my normal paper. This is Mnemosyne paper, which I love and I use for a lot of things, but I don't usually use it for ink reviews. So I was just looking for a small page. And this one had a small page, so that's why it got used. Yeah, this is, <laughs> this is not at all uh, waterproof. Yeah, look at that. Completely comes clean. There's nothing left over at all. The lines are gone. The dots are gone. Everything. This paper does stand up to water pretty well. I get a little bit of a bleed through right here where I was uh, just laying the ink on the paper and letting it pool. 
but uh, man, yeah, no water resistance at all. So that's another thing uh, against this ink, I suppose. So a little bit dry, forms crud on my nib, and also not even close to having anything regarding uh, waterproof. So uh, there you go. Um, here it is on a couple of different papers. Here is the... Uh, the copy paper sample. So there it is. And you can see there's, um, you know, no real feathering or anything like that. It looks pretty normal. And then on the back, you get like some spots of bleed through. Nothing bad, but this is a hard broad nib from Sailor, which is kind of on the, like it's not exactly dryish, but the ink's a little bit dry and the nib is a little bit on the fine side. So you get, uh, you do get some, some bleed through here, which is not ideal from that nib combo. So there you go. Um, and then... Here it is in an, uh, a currently inked journal. This is wheat straw paper. And you see the color comes through very strongly there. It looks nice. Uh, you don't get any shading or any sheen on this one. That was under the qualities page. Uh, but, uh, you know, it comes off as a nice orange. I like the way it looks. Uh, and that's actually the only one I have to show you because I cannot find my Tomoe River ink journal. It's just gone missing all of a sudden. So if I find that before I publish this video, I'll put in a picture here. If not, then, uh, you know, no picture for us. But um, it's going to look roughly the same. This ink doesn't have any shading or sheen or anything like that, so uh, nothing really for Tomoe River to show up. All right. Uh, so this has been Tasia Dai Dai from uh, Anderson Pens and Tasha. Thank you very much, Anderson Pens, for sending me out this little vial to check out. Uh, and I also bought this cool pen from them back in the day. Uh, so, uh, well, I, I really like the color of this ink. It's not really doing it for me. It might, however, do it for you. So get yourself a sample at the very least. It's a buck seventy-five for three mils, which is uh, enough to fill a pen a few times. So, uh, you know, give that a try. See if this one's really floating your boat because it is a neat color. And uh, the price is right, frankly, for these Tasha bottles. They're 12 bucks for 40 mils is not terrible for, uh, for a nice Japanese ink. All right, that's it. I'll see y'all later. Peace out.